Hello and welcome to the York Creatives Podcast. My name is Ben Porter and each week you can join me as I chat to someone from York's creative community. This week's episode is a bit different as it's a follow-on from my interview with Tom Hyam, Creative Director of the Media Alley Festival. He turns the tables on me and asks me for my thoughts on the creative scene in York and we discuss various ways the city can better provide artist development to the local community. So Ben, I just wanted to ask you a bit about being running a creative business in York and being super connected in lots of different conversations in York. What drives you and to keep doing that and keeps you here? Ooh, okay. Um, I guess the easiest way to answer this would be to kind of talk through the Plastic Fortune project, which I mm. launched, um, because that was my sort of first way of almost attacking York and saying like, why are we not more creative? Um, and I quickly discovered that people are creative. It's just not always that talked about. Mm-hmm. So the context for that was, because before I lived in New York, I lived in Sheffield and I was seeing all these these groups of people in Sheffield where there'd be like clothing companies, then there'd be DJs and then there'd be performers and like different kind of artists, creators, writers, musicians. Um, and there's like a scene and yeah. people were doing stuff. And, and they were really coming cool. out of the same groups and the same scene. Yeah, and they were all friends with each other yeah. all making things and... You know, whether that was as intense as I saw it to be on social media, you know, probably not. People tend to put the best stuff on there. But then when I looked at York and tried to search for stuff in York, Mm. there was just nothing. So I was like, come on. And I just put a post out on Facebook saying, who knows someone who does something creative? Um, And just through doing that, people like started, you know, inboxing me like, oh, I do this, I do that, I do that. It's like, why do people not know what you do? And like, Mm. you don't have a website, you don't have this, you don't have that. So I kind of went around trying to collect all these different people. Like, we need an arts collective. Um, and so that was my kind of way in. But why do I keep doing that? Um, I guess I think it's just an important thing to do. Mm. I think that York has a lot of unused potential and there are a lot of people here who would love for something to happen, but they don't want to be the first person to go for it. But you, what what I think you're conveniently um, smoothing over is you're doing that and the people involved see the graft and the time and the energy that you you put into that over the years and it's i think all the listeners to this can hear that and know that anyway but you're doing that despite perhaps not being necessarily that supported to do so a lot of other cities have a have a thing called a cultural like cultural champion or cultural czar or something Mm. like that i think you're that for york oh thank you (laughs) but no but honestly but but not on the not saying you should get a six-figure salary, but, you know, like, not not recognised as such because, I don't know, and so having the tenacity and the patience and the just force of will to stay doing that. Mm. Well, so I guess a part of it is, and why I've not really seeked any kind of recognition, is a lot of the reasons I've volunteered my time to be involved with these various things is because at this stage, I feel like I can learn a lot from them. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're getting things from me and I chat to a lot of people and I can pass those on. But when I'm sat in these various cultural leaders meetings and things like that, um, I'm listening a lot more than I'm seeing. Yeah. So for me, I see that as an opportunity to learn and being half the age of most people in the room, I think eventually they're not going to be doing it anymore. Yeah. Someone needs to replace yeah. it replace it replace them sorry um and if i keep doing this if i've got 10 15 years experience by the time i am where they are then that's going to put me in a good position yeah. not because i'm like power mad or anything but then <laughs> yeah. it would be useful it would be nice to have more influence over yeah. these kind of things that you currently look at and be like why is this not better but it, isn't it like from a um really like sort of semi-manipulative perspective like it's in york's interest if i you know looking at york over there like separate it mm. it's in york's interest for there to be more more of you like more people minded yeah. in your way to connect it up yeah don't leave our... it just to me because well, then <laughs> but you know what i mean like it, to to stimulate and kind of trying to build and um, not necessarily financially or it, it's not it's not really about money it's it's more about um like just recognizing what's going on like just just opening your eyes and going oh actually this this is totally fundamentally important and we're all sitting in a little vacuum talking about running our buildings and putting bums on seats and the next arts council return none of that is important 
because none of that has any point if there's no artistic and creative community that is nurturing and building and feeding off it and, and engaging with it. Mm. But how could York as a city, maybe this is a bit too abstract, but how could York as a city create a context for there to be 20 Ben Porters? That's difficult. So this... Without cloning. Right? Yeah, well, this comes back to the thing about privilege because the only reason I could do what I did was because I could live at home with my parents for free. Yeah. When I launched Plastic Fortune, I wasn't paying rent. I was in a, my fourth gap year yeah, yeah. between <laughs> finishing school and going to university. <laughs> An extended And I was like, Mom and Dad, I'm going to be in a band, I'm going to make it. <laughs> and then it's like, I'm not going to make it, but I'm going to do this creative project and please don't charge me rent. And I was paying a little bit, but it was yeah. negligible. Um, but that that year and a half when I did that um, is what's enabled me to get to where I am now. Yeah. Um, and now I'm supported by sort of quite a well-paid film job, which again I wouldn't have got if I hadn't had that initial support. But but interestingly, that privilege doesn't have it doesn't have to only be enabled by privilege, right? So, in um, a couple of other cities where I've seen this work, um, God, what's the name of the company? Hope, Hope Street in Liverpool. Okay, they have like a an artist and producers development program that basically funds people for nine months to do a project exactly like Plastic Fortune. Okay, and the Everyman Theatre in Liverpool does the same. Contact Theatre in Manchester does the same. That this is the role. Surely, this is the job of the cultural and education infrastructure to to go right. Here's three opportunities. 10 grand each for, to do a six month like quite open-ended what's your idea what do you want to what do you want to do for with this money like pay yourself a bit spend a bit whatever just kind of write a good report afterwards and to try and start and seed things because surely that's better use of of funds and it's more engaging like empowering of a sector because i think it, yeah. there's, there's there's loads of big ideas and big potential in york but unless it's like seeded and dis- dissipated a bit kind of cast the seeds a bit wider like w- yeah would would that do you think that would like not remove the need for privilege but like would that create context for more people yeah it would definitely help um you then need someone to manage those people though and yeah. to sort of train them you can't just give them the money and say disappear it comes back it's to artist people. development isn't it or yeah, creative definitely. development there's there seems like there's a bit of a gap um in terms of how that's provided i know there's like specific like theater development stuff and there's particular music stuff but maybe that sort of creative, just general creative entrepreneurial, mm. oh, that's a dirty word, but, you know, creative practitioner kind of business development isn't really there. Maybe. Yeah, it's not. And I wonder if that's because, <coughs> excuse me, if that's because what we were saying before about York finding it difficult to get funding. Mm. Um, mm. These organisations, if they're finding it difficult to get funding for what they're doing already, they're probably not going to want to run a development programme. Um but I'm sure they must be making a profit, otherwise they probably wouldn't be running. So it's difficult. I don't know the ins and outs of all of them. Mm, mm. But yes, definitely more artist development. I mean, that's been mentioned multiple times on the podcast yeah. when I talk about what's your opinion in New York. And they go, oh, it's great, 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 but we need artist development. We yeah. need people who are going to take risks. It's the, the same stuff comes up the same again and again. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as you say, with a generational shift, not waiting for people to die off, but like a slightly... A changing world and and changing era, maybe that that sort of wave building up is is a positive thing because it it's only gaining more influence and potential to do stuff with. Yeah. In terms of your creatively and artistically, what's the most exciting thing? I know you can't pick favourites because you know everyone. <laughs> that's that's terrible. But is there a? Um, we were talking before about momentum and like whether you feel like there's a sort of positive momentum shifting is there a particular part of what's going on in york at the minute that you're most excited about e- uh, yes there's lots of different things but the one that immediately jumps to the front of my mind is what young thugs are doing with all mm. the music stuff just because they're not doing it on their own mm. they've realized that there is a community of people here in york and they're pulling them together right and so the power that you have with more people and having a sort of a vision and saying you yeah, know let's do this together what they're achieving is loads more than what several of the people who've tried to do a similar thing and have failed because they've tried to do it all been quite closed about it, yeah. Yeah. One of the things that's going on at the minute in in those lengthy meetings is the cultural strategy for York is being written. Yep. And before everybody switches off and goes to sleep, um, there are some really interesting 
and hopefully quite exciting recommendations coming out of it, right? And one of them is about, you know, this period between the end of work, inverted commas, and kind of uh, theatre time or gig time or yeah. dinner time, basically, that five to eight o'clock slot, right? There's been there's been stuff in the past in York before I arrived and, and since I've been here that's tried to... Mm, Vespertine? Particularly Vespertine, right? To try to be a structural response to that. And I... I was chatting with somebody the other day who's who's involved with the strategy, just saying, well, do you think, and how does this sound to you speaking as the entire creative community of York, <laughs> <laughs> which you often get asked to do? It, that's a kind of um, structural response, right? So that's like the great and the good going, there's a problem, um, It's there's too much getting pissed and, and smashing streets up and um, stag do culture, and there's nothing to do culturally in the early evening, so everyone dissipates, they go to Leeds or they go Harrogate or they, you know, whatever they do, and they don't stay in the city. In other cities, there's a really quite thriving, that's a really culturally a really interesting time of day, right? Could you not, rather than all the institutional leaders go, we see a problem, right, let's write a funding bid and try and put on a, a programme of an event every month or every two months that some people like, some of them, some people love some of them, some people hate some of them, as with any programme of events, yeah. arguably. Could you not just say to all of those people in that room who are all agreeing that there's an early evening economy problem, most of whom who own or run buildings, right? Buildings which host cultural activity and arts projects and heritage projects every day. Could you not just ask them, once every, each of them, 14 of them, ideally, once every two weeks, stay open, like... Five till eight, stay open. I know everybody hates opening in the evening. And put out a call out. Maybe it's facilitated centrally with, I don't know, 500 quid, 800 quid or something, saying, pitch your idea to do something in our building on Wednesday the 14th of whatever. Yeah. There's 800 quid to do it. Off you go. Isn't that like... Quite and like, could that be appealing to like the creative, like, definitely, yeah. not just music, but also performers and kind of filmmakers, and you could do all sorts, like enough money to do a little bit. Nobody's going to get rich off it, but you might start building a scene. Yeah, could that? Would that not be a more sensible? Definitely, yeah. Because surprised that, no one's thought of that before. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like it's an opportunity for like people to get through the big, the big gated doors, you know, like metaphorically and physically. Do. You, could you see that starting to build a bit of momentum or would everyone just go, oh, oh, I'm too busy, I'm too tired, I'm not? Is there an itch to do stuff or is there, is that not yet yet there? Yeah, there's definitely an itch. Is it, Are there enough people with the itch is right. the question. Um, and I think with anything new, you'll get quite a few people applying and then sustaining it after a while. Because um, again, there's a lot of artists in York who won't put themselves out there, mm. who aren't quite confident enough yet mm. um who sort of even i've approached and said your work's great you know can i make a film about you do you want to come on the podcast like oh no i'm not quite sure yet right. kind of thing. And obviously you can't force people to do that um but that's in, a, you, in an environment that's not welcoming to taking risks right so they're yeah. kind of like it's got to be perfect before i show it sort of thing rather than yeah and you can't let that stop you i mean yeah. there's definitely i think there's definitely enough people to get something started and yeah. you'd hope that that would then bring more people in yeah um you could have different it, communities. You'd have like Arts Budge doing one night, Pika doing another night, somebody else, you know, crews doing things like and, and them taking a night a month or something. Yeah. You know, that would feel feel like quite vibrant. And like if we could make that an open question to the podcast as well of like, is there a way we talked about this, I remember about a year ago of um there seems to be like a um a remarkably small number of like and it's a cliche, but networking kind of like quite open, like different people, a DJ, a band, a, a different thing happening yeah. from now and again, just really informal, like a bit of a scene or an opportunity for a scene of like the people who perhaps aren't confident enough to show in a gallery yet, but they might come along to that, meet a few people, end up with a collaborator or a, a show, you know, or yeah. it, it feels like just a bit more, a bit less formal, not like one quarterly very sit down and there's an agenda and type thing but like you know super like just try and break down some of that um 
not stiffness, but that that kind of uh, lack of experimentation feels like it's sort of needed 